Welcome back to my garage. A few weeks ago my video was delayed because I spent a week in Greek with the extended family. This video will be delayed because me and the girlfriend without the kids just spent a week in Malta. This is the common holiday season in Norway where everybody goes on vacation. The schools are closed, my kids are at home, my girlfriend has some time off from work. Trying to figure out how I'm going to divide up my time between working here and being with my family in the holidays. That's why videos get delayed and progress is much slower than it uh, usually is. I feel kind of bad about it though, especially about me reaching new heights of anti-social behavior this year. Kind of trying to shut everything off and just be with the family, focus on something else. You probably understand. Probably thinking far too much about this though. For me, this is my life. For you, I'm just one single guy on YouTube amongst millions. Anyways, let's take this opportunity in these slow times to bring everything down on the floor and uh, bring everybody back on board about this engine and what's going on here. Here's where we left off last time. I made these drum valves in place of the disc valves I'll use up until now. This belt will probably melt. I know there's a lot of comments about that. I haven't really read all the comments and the replied and stuff this time. You know, anti-social behavior. A chain drive is probably much better. And the advantage of a chain drive is that I can do like this. Have the chain wrap around like that. Ports will be closed off symmetrically, which I think is better. I need to order sprockets and a chain. For new viewers, what you're seeing here is my home-built dyno with my home-built custom prototype engine mounted to it. The dyno consists of a retarder, a magnetic brake out of a truck, and this framework around it, and some sensors and stuff. It's actually my second home-built dyno. I've got this one too. It's an inertia dyno. I haven't seen much use lately, though we had my friends blown triumphs up here for testing just recently. This whole adventure started many years ago when I was trying to graft various cylinders onto Peugeot SPX cases. It's these cases. This is the whole crankcase. I made various adapters and uh, tried different things. I had almost no tools and uh, most of them were failures. I did get something running eventually though. An air-cooled Peugeot Speedfight cylinder onto one of these cases. If you scroll all the way back to my first videos on this channel, there's a few videos with that Peugeot SPX and uh, Speedfight cylinder. That's where it all started. As you might know by now, I'm a sucker for adventure and I almost exclusively bite off more than I can chew. The next step was creating my own custom cases. I got some aluminium machines for bearings and uh, flattened and then I carved the uh, transfer passages and everything else freehand with a Dremel. Switched out the Speedfy cylinder for an iAMI mini bike cylinder, which was much better, at least after porting. Unfortunately, I can't show you that Speedfight cylinder because I crushed it up and used it for casting. And I can't show you the engine, even though it is alive. It sits in a garage in Arkansas in the Bonneville Land Speed bike. I'll get to that. Custom home built cases and a ported cylinder was not enough though. I needed more adventure. Everything custom. After a couple of weeks of feeling like my brain was going to explode, I managed to teach myself to use Fusion 360 and uh, draw up a cylinder in CAD. I 3D printed a bunch of different designs until I ended up with something that was castable with the lost PLA method. Best of them yet looks like this. This is a riser and this is the where you pour the metal. I started with the cylinder. The cases came after the cylinder. After a bunch of failed attempts,
even more than what you can see here. I ended up with something that was usable. Sent it off to Hollander and then he machined it for me. I didn't have any machining tools at that time. Did a lot of research and bought a lot of chemicals and managed to plate the cylinders with uh, a nickel silicon carbide matrix here in the garage. It was somewhat of a success. I did use the wrong particles. I didn't use silicon carbide at first. I used uh, boron nitride, but it was the wrong type of boron nitride, not the hard type. This casting might not look too bad, but there's lots of porosity throughout the, the metal. Then Proto Labs kindly offered to 3D print my cylinder in metal. Needless to say, there's no porosity. And I got it professionally plated by Blixens Racing. Thank you, Blixens Racing. And thank you, Proto Labs. I designed cases for the cylinder and Kai Wheeler kindly offered to machine them for me. I didn't have a mill or a lathe at that time. The case has a primary intake and a secondary intake with a slide valve and injection. I've not been tested properly yet. I've been traveling a lot lately. Well, a lot compared to my usual habits. I'm amazed by how much enjoyment I can get out of just a change of scenery. Endless supply of gin tonic and sunny hot weather does help, but it doesn't have to be that way. It's just a contrast to my everyday life that makes the difference. I've showed you how you can use NordVPN to watch movies that's not available to you where you live. I've showed you how you can use NordVPN when traveling to watch stuff that's available to you at home but not where you're traveling to. Especially useful if you've got kids, you know creatures of habit and all that. Today I'm going to show you how you can use NordVPN to book cheaper flights. Now most of you are probably not located in the most expensive country in the world, Norway. But you're probably not located in the cheapest country in the world either. Open the NordVPN app and connect to a country that's cheaper than your country you're located in. I could choose any country here. I'll choose Malaysia. That's known to be a cheap country. Like cheap for booking flights country. Not a cheap country in any other way. But financial. Open your web browser of choice. Go into incognito mode. This step is important. There might be cookies tracing you, revealing your real location. Now search for flights to where you want to go. There's a bunch of places to choose from. I can't tell you what's best. What I can tell you is if you book from a cheaper country than where you're from, you'll probably get cheaper prices than what you would get from your more expensive country. You've booked your cheap flight, you fly and you arrive at your hotel. You want to take advantage of their free Wi-Fi. It's not really secure, is it though? Regardless of the security issues of the hotel's public Wi-Fi, NordVPN's got you protected by creating an encrypted tunnel for your data to travel in. So no one can peek in and steal your passwords or banking information or anything. NordVPN now offers the Nord Security Bundle. You can choose from standard NordVPN only plus a one month bonus. Plus that's NordVPN and NordPass plus a one month bonus on all products complete that's nordvpn nordpass and nordlocker plus a one month bonus on all products head to nordvpn.com slash two stroke stuffing for a great deal it's risk-free thanks to their 30-day money-back guarantee thank you nordvpn this stuff is on hold for the moment my unquenchable thirst for adventure had me diving down a new rabbit hole the engine i showed you in the beginning Supercharged, externally scavenged, 50cc two-stroke with rotary exhaust duct valves running on methanol and nitromethane. I'll put a link in the description to the first video when I started thinking about this. And you can start there and follow along. There's far too much to talk about to fit into just this single video. been a bumpy road to get to where we're at now and the road ahead is probably not any smoother. Our first problem was running that 300cc per revolution blower one to one with the crankshaft caused far too much pressure in the 50cc engine and it wouldn't really rev at all. Reduce the ratio to 2.2 to 1. That seems to work fine. Second problem was my carbon fiber nylon 3D printed parts. They would not create a seal against the metal. When torqued down, they would kind of bow and create a leak between the bolts. 
replaced all the 3D printed parts with metal parts. And that solved that problem. I can't show you all the parts because some of them are mounted to the engine. Next was lots of trouble with the ignition trigger wheel and the rotary valve drive slipping. Sorted that with a solid axle and uh, used a threaded keyway grab screw thing to hold the pulley. And then my rotary valve broke. Made out of too thin material and it, it bowed and grabbed the cover. Sorted by this much thicker stainless steel valve. It was about the same time we started breaking reed valves and reed valve cages. Replaced the reed valves. We were actually making good power. Though the thicker heavier valves were breaking a lot of drive belts. Eventually the new reed valves gave out. The methanol and nitromethane fuel softens the reed pedals. It leaches out the resin from the fiber. It makes them soft. They stiffen up again though, but I think they're getting weaker. Pieces from those first broken reed valve cages destroyed my head and I had to machine a new one. That head destroyed itself from compression and I machined a new one. Created a big radius here and that solved the broken head problem. This head is 14.5 to 1 compression and what's in the engine now is 20 to 1 compression. That's static compression on a two-stroke. It's lower in, uh, in practice. Getting tired of breaking reed valves and I have a theory about not having enough blowdown, exhaust blowdown. Designed and machined a new cylinder. This is the old one. The new one is on the engine. With twice the exhaust blowdown area. Two exhaust ports and a different port layout. So I wouldn't need those reed valves. Forgot to mention I had to take this cylinder apart a couple of times. It's made in two parts and uh, pressed together with a sleeve. Developed a leak between the two halves. I tried with different sealants, didn't work. I tried with some copper o-rings, they did work a while. Now it's JB welded together and that's held up fine in this one and the new cylinder. I had to replace the sleeve with a new one because I broke it while pressing it out the second time. 2.2 to 1 blower dry ratio seems to be kind of the sweet spot, for now at least. We could remove the wastegate, which I had been using as a dump valve to dump excessive pressure. And the boost controller. Started with twin rotary disc valves on the new twin exhaust cylinder, driven through the engine from a single belt. The old belts slipped and couldn't handle it. I went and bought some carbon fiber and switched out the heavy metal valves for fiber. Without some supporting flanges, the fiber valves gave out quickly. I went back to the heavier valves, upgraded to a wider and different profile belt. It's held up, but then the axle broke. I have a theory about these disc valves becoming disc brakes under pressure. I've tried to eliminate some friction in the cover but I don't think it's enough. Now we're venturing into combined exhaust outlets and drum valves. This is as far as we've gotten with the drum barrel valves. I'm gonna order some sprockets and a chain and switch this drive out without even trying it first. No point in learning the hard way that rubber belts will melt when driven by an exhaust pipe. The point of all this is creating the most powerful two-stroke ever. Horsepower versus cylinder capacity. And breaking some speed records at Bonneville. About that, it won't happen this year. We need something powerful and reliable. Not quite there yet. Jim, Don, Travis, I'm extremely sorry for the lack of communication. It's that antisocial behavior thing. And that vicious cycle where it gets harder and harder to break silence for every day where you don't break silence. Some of you might relate, I don't know, <laughs> maybe it's just me. Anyways, not in my wildest dreams, I would have imagined I could make a living out of doing this. And I owe it all to you. So thank you guys. Thank you for watching, thank you for supporting me on Patreon, thank you for donating, thank you for helping out making parts, thank you for the comments, thank you for all the great advice, thank you for everything. Thank you. And I'll see you next time.